Well, welcome everybody. This is our CTC virtual information session and we're glad to have you here. All prospective Eagles and maybe some current Eagles to, uh, learning to, uh, hoping to get more information. So uh, we're here to provide that information to you. Uh, I'm Bruce Fassbinder. I'm in the CTC marketing department and joining me is Maricela Santiago. She's director of student life. Uh, Professor Angela Reese will be on her way. She's in our business administration department. Professor Ellen Falkenstein is in the math department. And Pearl Creviston is our Director of Financial Aid. Lucette Brett is Director of Veteran Services, and she's got some information about some changes for those students who are military or using uh, uh, military benefits. And Jeff Pyatt is our Admissions and Recruiting person. So again, they will all share some great information with you and much needed information to help you get on your way on your journey as an Eagle. And again, the purpose of this info session, we want to share with you the many things CTC has to offer as far as programs of study, academic services, student services, and other services, which we hope will convince you to make that smart choice and begin your higher education and career pursuits here with CTC. We'll also talk about how to apply at CTC, register for classes, and get financial aid and scholarship opportunities. And so even if you're not sure what you want to do career-wise, job-wise, or otherwise, hopefully we can start you thinking about it and get your mind thinking about college and and make you realize ETC is a very affordable, great place to start. And before I go any further, let me, without further ado, I forgot to mention Julie Starkey, our Dean of Student Services. So Julie, thank you. She's gonna be chiming in with some great information for you as well. So my apologies, Julie. So anyway, uh, since uh, Angela Reese just joined us and I'm gonna stall until she gets here. I'm not, I don't wanna put her on the spot like that. Hi, Dr. Reese. Hi. Are you ready? It's not Dr. Reese. Department? No, no, this is the beehive. No, no, she's she's Beyonce. She arrived late. <laughs> <laughs> I'm That's trying to get my laptop team. working. It's not working. So I'm I'm almost there. Okay. Are, are you want us to wait and go somewhere else or you want to start? Um, well, I can't show Blackboard, so Okay. Well, we'll start with Ellen. Okay. Ellen's a great place to start. So Ellen, Ellen Falkenstein is in the Math Express, a math professor, and she's going to talk about career pathways. Now, CTC offers numerous degrees, numerous areas of study, but they're all broken down into six career pathways. And, and Ellen's going to explain those to you, a certificate or degree programs in these, degree, in these uh, career pathways. So Ellen, I'm going to turn it over to you. Awesome. Thank you. Certainly. Let me share my screen real quick. All right, can you see my screen? Can you see the website? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. All right, so this is, if you just go to www.ctcd, as in dog, .edu, you'll get to our website. We have so much information on the website. Um, but I want to kind of direct you some places. I do want you to notice down here in the bottom right, there is what we call our Eagle Bot. And you can ask questions. Um, if you find that it's not really answering your question, that's okay. Say that and it will go to someone and we'll get you some help. So uh, I'll mention that in a little bit. But what I'm talking about today are the Explore Academic Programs. So if you know what you want to do, you can go to here and get lots of information. If you don't know, there's all kinds of information in here as well. So if you click on that Explore Academic Programs, we've got all kinds of videos. This is a video that just gets you going of what's happening. And then we are divided into six clusters. So we have Arts and Humanities and Media. There's a video that talks about that. And then you'll see the different areas underneath that. So like drama, modern languages, music. Then we go to business and business technology. Same thing, we've got accounting, culinary arts, and you can even see we have um, continuing ed programs in here too. Those are usually a little shorter. They're not for a degree, but they do help you get a job or get a better job. Uh, then we have construction, manufacturing, transportation, that is all of your like diesel, um, aviation. We are now a Kabuda uh, school. Kabota, excuse me. Kabuda, where'd that come from? Kabota. And um, that is, we're going to have tractors and four wheelers, and you learn how to fix them, and you can get a job. I'm trying to convince them to bring the tractor out to my place, but it's not working yet. <laughs> We've got healthcare all kinds of items in healthcare, including massage therapy. 
We have public service. We've got uh, criminal justice. We have a police academy at CTC. And last but not least is STEM. And so we've got engineering. We have robotics. So you know CTC has robotics. We have the robots. You can learn to program them. It's really awesome. So each of these areas has a video. And then if you click, I'm going to come back here to culinary arts because I like their pathways. So I'm going to come up here to business and culinary arts and hospitality. But you can click around and look at all of them. Um, I know there's a lot. So if you go on the EagleBot and you type Career Center, uh, you can go to our Career Center and for free, you can take all kinds of surveys to see if you can kind of narrow down what maybe you would be good at or what you would like, um, ties it to jobs. And so that is a great resource and you do not have to be here to use that resource. So if we click on Culinary Arts and Hospitality, then you get another video. So for every program, you get a video where you get to see students talking about what they do. There's professors on there. You also get to see some of the jobs and what you might make at those jobs. And then this is the part we're really excited about is the pathway. So let's say you are interested in um, maybe owning a restaurant. So if you click on this restaurant and culinary, management, we have stackable certificates. What that means is with this first certificate for restaurant skills, you're going to take seven courses, you're going to earn a certificate, and then you could get a job with those skills, and you can still keep going to school here. For just two more classes, you can get another certificate, and then you keep working your way down. You don't waste any classes. All of the classes work towards the next certificate, and finally, the associate's degree. So we call that stackable. Um, you'll see the, the career choices here as well. All right, then you go on and we've got, if you click on a degree, you will go to our catalog and you'll see all of the classes that you need to take for that. You can see where those classes are located. And then when you get to the bottom, you can actually contact the department, which we would love for you to do. We absolutely want you to ask questions. We also, if you uh, participate in the new student orientations, the faculty come to those and they, they break out into the clusters and you can meet the faculty, you can ask questions. So that is another great resource. So again, we know this is a lot of information, but if you ever need help with any of this, you can contact me at math.express at ctc.edu. Um, I can help you explore the academic programs. You can also reach out to your advisor and they can help you with those as well. Let me just show you real quick the Career Center page. Um, this is our Career Center page. And we've got, if you come down here, where is it? The Career Assessment. That is where the surveys are. When I took it, it said I should be a pharmacologist so or a pharmacist. So I don't know what I'm doing teaching math, but that's OK. All right. Bruce, is there anything else that I missed? No, the only thing I would, is, if you can go, if, yeah, if you can go back one page to the, uh, the career clusters thing real quick. I just want to say, uh, I'd like say, uh, to scroll down. Uh, right here, if you click on one of these options like culinary arts or, or a restaurant and culinary management, it will kind of give you a blueprint of the classes that you need to take to complete that degree or certificate and the credit hours that are associated with each one of those classes. So, in other words, it, it gives you just kind of an idea of what you need to take to complete a certain degree. So, you're not taking classes, oh, I think I might need this, or I think I might need that. I don't need that. This tells you exactly what you need so you can stay on track, get that degree or certificate on time in a timely manner quicker than you would be and save some money so you're not spending money on classes that you don't really need. So again, it, it's, a, it's a great little blueprint to help you on that career path and that degree path. So you're, you're muted, Ellen. <laughs> Whoops, unmute me. Um, Right next to it, it has links to the class description so you can see what it's about. And then also, once you work with an advisor and are in a certificate or degree program, your Eagle Self-Serve will populate with these classes 
And in your My Progress, you can see which classes you've already taken and which classes you still need to take. Yeah. So we make it as easy as possible for you to stay on track and, and follow your own uh, degree or certificate path So along the way. So, Ellen, thank you so much. Any yeah, last so thing you want to add about uh, the Career Pathways? pathways. No, nope, I think I got it. If I think of something, I'll put it do. in the end. And anyone watching, if you have questions, please feel free to type them, in, type them in the chat and we'll get there. Or if you've got a microphone, when there's a break in the action, feel free to chime in and ask the question. So thank you, Ellen. We appreciate it. Uh, let's move on to Dr. Reese. Angela Reese is uh, in our business uh, administration department and she is our Blackboard guru, but we're not going to go into a lot of detail about, about, about Blackboard. We're just going to tell you what it is. So because a lot of students, new students get confused by it or don't know exactly what it is and how we as CTC people use that uh, that system. So and then class delivery and some other aspects that uh, that are important to you as students first signing up. So Angela, take it away. Yes, sir. Yes, thank, sir. You. thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. You got an echo. So one of you is uh, there's two. Okay. Of you. There we go. How's that? Perfect. <laughs> Before I close it out, I wanted to make sure that this one was working. So I apologize to everybody with my technology issues, just like students, <laughs> we can have them too. So um, thank you all for joining us today. I'm so excited um, to be a part of this and to welcome you and to answer any questions that you might potentially have that you didn't even know you had. So thank you to Ellen for um, going over all of the various wonderful pathways um, that we have at the college. She and her team has worked very hard to create those. Um, so take Take advantage of them, explore them, look around, see what all is available for you as a student um, and to share with others too if you see things that they might be interested in. So once you do all of that exploring and once you get enrolled and you do all your financial aid and like you are ready to roll, um, you're going to start having some questions about the types of classes that we have. So at the college, we have a variety of different delivery modes. Um, so we have some classes that are 100% online, meaning you don't show up to the campus, you log Log into our virtual classroom, which is Blackboard, which I'm going to show or show you around here in just a second. I'll be your chauffeur. Um, and uh, so those are 100% online. And then even with some of those, some of them are just like a normal start and end date. It has assignments. It you know you have to meet all these deadlines, right? Just like a lecture class. Um, and so you have to pay attention to all of those deadlines. But you might get into a course that's self-paced, meaning it has a start date and it has an end date and everything in between is basically up to you to make sure that you're following the suggestions of your faculty members or member if you just have one. Um, so make sure to pay attention to the type of class that you're enrolling in. And if you're like, I don't know what she's talking about. I don't know how to tell the difference. Um, once you're in class, it is 100% clear which type of class that you have enrolled in. And you can also see that in your Eagle self-service, but we as faculty members also reiterate that to make sure that you know clearly what type of class you're in. So we've got online, we've got online self-paced, and then we also have lecture and blended. So lecture is where like you're probably have been used to with other institutions or in high school to where you go to school and you know you go to your classroom and you interact with your faculty. 100% um, lecture, which most of them do have a blackboard component for your exams and some of your assignments. But then we also have blended, meaning you might meet once a week and then the rest is online. So lots of different delivery modes uh, available to help meet the needs that you have um, with you know work and school and family and all the other things you're trying to balance. So we're trying to help you balance those as well. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you um, a little tour around Blackboard. So give me just one second to share this with you. How is that? Can you see it? Can somebody give me a yes. thumbs up or a, okay, yes, perfect. We're good. So I'm going to show you how to get to Blackboard. So there are many ways to get there um, from our homepage, which is ctcd.edu. We're going to scroll all the way to the bottom and I'm going to try not to make you dizzy. And right here in the middle, you will see Blackboard. Once you click on that link, it's going to take you to another site. Um, I suggest, I strongly encourage that you save this site just in case for whatever reason you can't remember the college website or at the moment in time that you come to sign on, maybe there's something going on with the website. This way you always have access to Blackboard, which is just ctc.blackboard.com. So I have it saved to my browser. From here, you're going to enter in your username and your password. Username is simply your student ID. Password is your date of birth, month, month, day, day. 
year year. So once you enter all that information in, then you will be able to enter into the classroom. If you're thinking, well, I don't know what my uh, user ID is. I don't know my CTC ID number. These instructions down here will go over that. So if I'm going too quick and you maybe want to explore that, you can click on these other links to help you with that. Once you're in, you're going to see all kinds of resources for you, not just your courses, but student resources. Mine happen to say faculty since I'm a faculty member, um, but yours are going to look a little bit different in the resources that you have. So we are going to go into um, just a course that I have running right now, which is business principles. As soon as we go into it, um, you are able to see um, this course that I've created. Um, keep in mind that each of your faculty members will have your courses set up a little bit different, but for the most part, most of us have it entering into the announcements. Most of us have a lot of these tools on the left hand navigation panel that you will see. I'm not going to go into each one of them because it's different for every class. I'm just going to touch on just a few of the highlights. Um, whether it's announcements or messages in class, you will quickly learn which your uh, faculty member prefers to use. So you can see here, for example, for me, I pretty much have announcements going one, two, three times a week. Um, this is my preferred communication um, method. Um, and then, of course, I will reach out to my students directly with messages. But if it's for the whole group, this is how I do it. Um, you can go to start here if you're brand new and you can familiarize yourself with Blackboard um, announcements, as I've already discussed messages. You can get a hold of your faculty member or any member, uh, any of your peers. I can't show you what this looks like because there are students enrolled, but basically you would create a message and then get to see everybody in your class and send them messages. Instructor info, you can um, learn more about your instructor. You can also figure out when their office hours are, who their supervisor is, and, and much more. Then the meat and the potatoes is really what I want to show you. So syllabus page one and syllabus page two. This is your Bible. This is your roadmap. This is your path to success. You are going to see information about your specific course, what course materials or books um, that you may need. This one happens to be an ebook that is free. Um, we have other uh, information that is in each of our classes and then also potentially some frequently asked questions and even a new student orientation. So this right here is something that our distance ed department created where you can go through and learn more about Blackboard. Another resource for you, um, we have about a 45 minute, if you think I'm talking so fast and this is so quick and you need much more detail, um, and we have about a 45 minute video that you can watch at your leisure and stop and play with the course that you have and make sure that you understand it. Um, but it goes into a great amount of depth in Blackboard and how to do things, how to write a discussion board, um, how to contact your professor, all those types of things. And then syllabus page two is what I highly encourage you to pay a great deal of attention to as soon as you have access. So you have access to Blackboard three days prior to your course starting. So if your course starts on a Monday, the first day you you could access it would be a Friday. If on a Tuesday, the first day you could access it would be on a Saturday. So this is where I was saying that as a faculty member, we're going to tell you what you need to know about this course. Like what course did you just sign up for? So this one happens to be a self paced course that runs from January through May, meaning it has a start date. It has an end date and everything else is pretty much up to my students to stay on task. Regardless of what you type of class you sign up for, you have to be active in some type of activity in order to remain in class. That's non-negotiable, whether it's lecture, whether it's online, self-paced, whatever, you have to do this or you will be dropped from class. Um, so please, please, please make sure to do that. And then below that, once you have that taken care of, then you're going to see this schedule of assignments. This is where you can go Print it off if you're like me and you like to highlight and cross off and check mark to make sure that you are on track. Um, so as soon as I finish the course procedures quiz, I would make sure to put a note what day and what time I finish that. Um, and then below that, there's just more general information per class about when the exams are, how the grade um, is structured, how to get an A, all of those great things. Another uh, thing that I do want to show you is, do I still have a few minutes? Yes. Okay, another thing that I do want to make sure to show you is another way to keep track of your grades. So on the left hand side, we're going to go back over it to, over to it again. Um, we're going to go down to my grades. So I'm going to click on my grades. 
and it's going to show me all of the assignments since this one is self paced. They're all open the whole class. Um, so it will show you that basically I haven't done any of my work. Everything has a little minus right here. So had I taken the course procedures quiz and gotten a perfect score, it would have a 25 right here where this little dash is saying perfect score, right? Um, if I were to get a 50%, I would have a 12.5 right there, right? Okay. Um, and then all the way down, you can see how that would look. One, one thing I want to point out to you, though, is in addition to checking to make sure it's complete that you've done it, um, there are some assignments such as in my class, this discussion board. So in this discussion board, you can view the rubric to see what the requirements are, how to get a perfect score. Um, but the other thing is, is if you do it um, and you don't do the whole thing. So I require an initial post and three replies to peers. So if you only do the initial post right here instead of a dash, it's going to be a blue circle, which means you have not completed it. Once it's complete, meaning initial post and three replies, so a total of four, it's going to be a white exclamation point inside of a yellow circle. That tells you you have done everything you need to do, and now it's up to me, the professor, to grade it. So this is just a couple different ways for time management and keeping track of yourself to make sure that you are doing things that you're supposed to be doing and on time. Um, so please, please, please um, keep track of how you're prog progressing through the course. Now back over to the navigation panel. I'm almost finished. Um, this area right here, um, this is what will be unique to each instructor. So after the syllabus, I have my lessons. Some might have weekly assignments, it might be called, or it might be called units or modules. I call them lessons, um, and the majority of the business department does. That's kind of how we uh, categorize it. We also have an article report where you can go and look at instructions. In other courses, it might say research paper, or it might say if you're in a math course, it might say connect, um, or um, my, my math lab are one of those things. Um, and then discussion boards. So again, each course is just a little bit different. And then finally, exams, but it's all kind of chunked together to logically make sense. Final thing that I want to show you is when I do go to lessons, I save this for last for a reason. When I go to lessons, it's not going to let me see it. And it is because I haven't completed my biosig ID um, verification. So anybody that is brand new has to create a biosig ID. And it's really simple to get started in doing it. You can use the same one that I have, and I'll show you what it looks like. You can read through this process right here. You can watch an enrollment video, but basically you're going to create a passcode that you will use the entire time you're with us. So if you're in four classes, you only have to create it once and then you use it in each class in which it's required. And then semester to semester, you reuse it. So let me show you what that looks like. And um, why isn't, hang on just one second. Mine is, oh, it's because I already verified in this class. Let me go to a different class real quick. I apologize because I showed this. Um, back a few weeks ago and already verified my biosig ID. So let me show you in a different class. So I'm going to go to lessons and it's, there we go, it's hidden. <laughs> so in order to um, verify I am who I say I am, as a reminder, I already came up here to this biosig enrollment ID. I created my ID. I watched the video to make sure I was doing it correctly. And now I'm ready to verify I am Angela Reese. So I'm going to click on lessons and it's going to bring me to another screen. I am going to enter my biosig ID and it's kind of hard to talk and do this at the same time. So just bear with me. So there it is. You can use mine if you want three lowercase L's and a capital L. We all do it differently. So it's unique to you. Ta-da! Once you do it successfully, now all your lessons are showing. Do we have any questions or are there, is there anything that I didn't cover that y'all would like for me to? I think you did a great job on covering that. And for those of you, I know that was a lot uh, information. Blackboard is, is probably the most uh, labor intensive kind of mind boggling uh, system, but uh, we do have a, uh, a, a more, I guess, concise uh, presentation on CTC live that Dr. Reese has done. And you can view that, view that on YouTube on our CTC YouTube page and, uh, and you can stop and start it and go over it as many times as you need to if you have any questions about Blackboard. So again, that's once you get started in the classes and so forth, and the majority of the professors use that as their, their tool to communicate with you, especially with syllabus and, and so forth and, and, and posting grades and that kind of thing. So again, thank you, Dr. Reese. We truly appreciate it. So. And we're kind of going a little bit out of order here, but the, the, before you can sign up for classes and before you can take your career pathway, you have to be accepted. You have to be admitted to CTC. So, Jeff, you're going to tell us briefly on uh, on how students can get admitted to CTC. All right, I'll be glad to do that. Can you all hear me? Okay. 
Yes. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Jeff Pyatt. I, I'm an admissions advisor recruiter for Central Texas College in Colleen. And as Bruce mentioned, uh, we have different speakers here today talking about uh, the different programs offered, the different clubs. Uh, Ms. Kravis is going to talk about how to pay for it, but we want to show you how to, to be able to get to CTC. Uh, my job is to help you with the application process and so on. I'm going to uh, click the share button and see. Well, I'm not going to click that. So anyway, uh, I'm going to tell you how to apply for admission. OK, so Bruce, if you'll go to the website at www.ctcd.edu and okay. if you can share that. I will do so. OK, Wait one second and we'll get there. Sure. And what you're going to do is when you're actually going to submit an application to apply Texas. OK, and we're going to show you how to get there. So if you hit the red apply now button at the at the top of the page, what you're going to have to do is. Uh, I'm going slow. OK, you're going to go down for first time users. You're going to create an account. So if you will create an account, uh, the next the next one below that. Yeah, right there. Create an account. And then when you click that, you're going to have to scroll back down again to create an account. And this is uh, creating your account for Apply Texas. OK, so what you're going to do is you're going to create a username and mine is Jay Pyatt. Uh, your user, your your email, I would suggest if you're in high school not to use your student uh, email in high school, because once you graduate, you won't have access to that. And then you're going to create a password. And then you're going to hit sign up and that's going to create your account for apply Texas. OK, but there's still some processes that you have to get to before you can actually submit your application. And the next thing you do is when you are logged in, you're going to have to create your student profile. Your student profile is about eight or nine pages long in, in questions. It talks about your address, prior college. Um, and your demographics and things like that. Once you have submitted that, then you need to submit an application to a college. And Apply Texas has multiple colleges on there. Since you're on our website, you're going to apply for CTC, and then you're going to uh, answer those questions about maybe what you want to major in and so on. And then once you submit your uh, application successfully, you're going to see the confetti falling so that you know that your application is submitted. Uh, the application doesn't cost or obligate or bind you to anything. It's good for a year from the time you apply or for the time you last attend. So let's say that you apply now for the fall of 2023. If you don't uh, start in the fall of 23, but you wait until the fall of 24, your application is good. If you don't start in the uh, in the spring of 24, if you don't start in the spring of 24, uh, but you start in the summer of 24, your application is still good. But if you wait until the fall of 2024, you'll need to make another application. OK, so the application is good for one year. The CTC has an open admissions policy. Uh, you'll be accepted if you have your high school diploma or your GED. So uh, you don't have to write an essay. Just make application and you're good. Um, before you can register for classes, you'll need to speak with um academic advising okay and academic advising does a couple of different a couple of different things they can help you choose your career path they can help you choose your your degree plan or or your academic plan and they're gonna create a path to tell you how to get there okay so everybody who registers uh who applies for ctc needs to visit with academic advising before you can register for your classes you can either uh Bruce, can you scroll up just a little bit? Does it have a does it have their email the other way? Uh, you can, no, okay. We, we can get that. Okay. So, uh, we'll type it in the chat. I don't know maybe. that. I don't know you that can, the. If you click on where it says academic advising, it'll open. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, the I don't know that the academic advising email is working at this moment. It is. It is. is. It we is right we now. just got confirmation okay. that it's back up and running. OK, good, good, good. I don't in the the live chat. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's being manned at the moment or not. So you can uh, either call them or email them. OK, if you're local to Colleen in, in the surrounding areas, the 526-1226, uh, or you can send them an email. If you're out of the area, if you're out of Colleen, Carpus Cove, let's say you're in Austin or Dallas or something like that, you can click on the Eagles on call. And they're available Monday through Friday. 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Central Standard Time to answer your answer your advising questions. Okay, so 
But before you can register for your classes, you will have to satisfy testing requirements. CTC does not require the SAT or the ACT, so you won't need to, to take those. However, you'll need to take a placement exam uh, called the TSIE2, okay? And a lot of folks refer to that as an entrance exam. I don't call it an entrance exam. I call it a placement exam. And basically what that test does is determines your level of reading, writing, and, and math. Are you college level or do you need uh, developmental? So I like to tease <laughs> and uh, Ellen Falkenstein always laughs because math is not my thing. She's very great in math, but I read and write fine, but math isn't my thing. So that's, I had to take some beginning uh, algebra in <laughs> when I was in college. And I'm still not good in math. So that's just the way the ball bounces, okay? So, it, so it's, not a, it's not a pass or fail. So meaning if you don't pass the test, that doesn't mean that you won't be accepted to CTC. You will, you just may have to take some developmental classes to build the skills that you need to, to become a college level, okay? So um, when students come to CTC, they have a couple of different options. And we have, I guess I would say maybe three different career paths, I guess if that's what you wanna call them. We have a one-year associate's degree that will get you in and get you out into the workforce within within a year. An example would be an LVN, okay? Uh, or perhaps a one-year certificate in welding. You can graduate and you can start working immediately. Another, another option is a two-year associate's degree, and that can be an associate degree in nursing, and then, uh, or maybe a two-year associate's degree in welding. And really the difference between the certificate and the associate's degree, the associate's degree is gonna take you a little bit longer, it's gonna cost you a little bit more. You have to have five academics, English, math, psychology, humanities, and something like that. I always suggest students do the associate's degree if that's uh, if that's an option, particularly if you made good grades in high school. Um, I, and I think in the long run, it's just gonna make you a little bit more money. But the one-year certificates and two-year associate's degrees, a lot of students choose those pathways because they don't wanna spend four years in school in college. I would never tell a student, don't go get a four-year degree, but for some students who are just on the fence about wanting to come to school or not to college, look at a one-year certificate, look at a two-year associate's degree. We have uh, programs in the continuing ed, like truck driving, and I think the pharmacy tech is in continuing ed and so on. So those are a couple of options. The last option will be a two-year associate's degree uh, where you can transfer your Associate of Applied Science degree to Texas a and University, Central Texas, for example, okay? Students who are younger than the age of 21, younger than the age of 22 on the first day of class, have to have proof of back meningitis vaccination within the past five years. If you're taking a face-to-face -face class, it's required. If you're registering for just uh, online classes, it's not required. But if you're uh, taking a combination of face-to-face -face and online, it's required. That's not just for CTC, it's for Temple College, uh, University of Texas and things like that. So that's really all I have to say about the application process and so on. I'll type my uh, email address in the chat box here in a minute. You're welcome to send me an email, apply for admission, send me an email, say, hey Jeff, can you check the status of my application? And I'll be glad to do that for you. Thanks. Thank you, Jeff. We appreciate that. And, and the good thing is, as Jeff mentioned, by submitting your online application, it doesn't commit you to CTC. It puts you on file. So when you're ready to make that decision about whether to go to school or not, that paperwork part is already done for you. So then you can just proceed with the with the rest of the admissions process. But again, it, by filling out that online application for admission, it's not a commitment on your part to that you have to attend CTC. It's just a great first step to get that little piece of the puzzle out of the way and get you rolling for the next part. And so, and now that we've talked about how you get in school, how are you gonna pay for school? And we've got Pearl Creviston, our, our Director of Financial Aid, and along with Lucette Brett, who's going to talk about the veterans and military benefits of paying for school. So, Pearl, let's start with you. And, and I know you've got some information about the FAFSA and some due dates and those important kind of things that students need to be aware of. Okay. Well, hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us. 
I want to kind of touch on some of the stuff because we're already started in this term and some of the basic phone calls and questions that we get the most often I thought might be a good topic to start with. And some of them are about which FAFSA do I do right now? This is 2023, so I should probably do the 23-24 FAFSA, right? No, unfortunately, if you did that one, it won't start until the fall term. So for the 23-24, if you're graduating high school, for instance, in this summer, and you want to start in the fall term, that is the correct FAFSA that you would be doing, and you will use 2021 tax information in order to complete that file. If you're trying to take classes right now, you started last fall, or you intend to go to school in the summer, the FAFSA you need for that one is the 22-23 FAFSA using your tax income from 2020. So a little confusing because when you go to the Department of Ed website right now, it automatically defaults to the 23-24 aid year. So that's why a lot of students will go ahead and do that one. It's okay to do that one, especially if you're starting in the fall, it's already time to make sure you get that one completed. But if you're wanting to take classes right now or in this summer, you do need to make sure and go back and do the 22-23 FAFSA as well. So you've done the FAFSA, you followed all the directions, you've done your admissions application, you've already talked to academic advising, you're all set, you're ready to go to school, and what happens with your money now? So two of the biggest questions is, when am I going to get my money? Well, that has two answers. So your financial aid actually transmits to the business office 10 days prior to the start of your classes. So if you're taking full-time classes, they all start at the same time, then your spring funds are all gonna release to the business office 10 days prior to the start of the classes for the full amount in the term. However, if you're splitting up your classes, you may be taking two classes now, and you're taking two classes that start in March. You're going to get a message when you look at your student self-serve that says you're currently ineligible for some of your aid. The reason is you're only in half time now, so we'll release the first half, and the other half is ineligible until 10 days prior to the start of your classes. So that really confuses a lot of people. They're like, hey, I did everything, I accepted it, why does it say I'm ineligible? You're always going to see an ineligible message for any portion of aid that has not released. And that's always based on your enrollment. So for financial aid, until you're in 12 hours, you may see ineligible, but it's only for the portion that hasn't released yet. So that's one of the biggest, most confusing questions we get all the time is I've done it all, why do I still show ineligible? The next one is when am I going to get my money to my bank account? That's the biggest question and the one that students get the most confusion over because we say 10 days prior to the start of classes and they automatically assume that's to their bank account. Again, it is not. It is transmitted to the business office. They use the money to pay your tuition, any charges you have, and allow you to use that money at the CTC bookstore. Once you've done all that, then about 30 days after classes start, and it could be sooner, especially for student loans, you will receive the balance of funds that were transmitted to the business office and not used. So anything left over is then sent to the students. And typically if you have Pell and student loans, a large majority may be your student loan portions. So that's how the funds actually transmit and go to your actual bank accounts and when they transmit. So the other question that a lot of students get right now, especially if they're current students, is I've gotten a message that says that I am ineligible right now or my funds aren't releasing, I don't understand why not. There could be a lot of different variables in financial aid that will prevent your aid from being released. Number one is your academic standing. So if financial aid has you on a suspension or a maximum time frame, your financial aid will not release as long as you're under that status. So maximum time frame confuses a lot of students and the reason is because they're not sure, well, I was on a certificate program and I, I reached maximum time frame, but now I'm on an associate's degree and my funds still haven't released. 
you must contact financial aid and let us know when you change programs. That is one of the requirements in order for us to be able to go in and re accept, re um, evaluate, excuse me, reevaluate what your eligibility currently is. So if you were on a certificate and reached max time frame, which means you've attempted 150% of the hours required for your program, then your funds are denied. If you switch over to an associate's degree, which requires 60 credit hours, then you don't reach max time frame until you have 90 hours total. So at that point, if you're switching from a certificate to an associate's, you could be eligible for aid again, and you'll just let us know you've changed to an associate's and we can reevaluate that program on that on the hours that you have total. The other one is suspension. So anytime you're on a suspension or a max time frame, you have the right to an appeal. It's called a satisfactory academic progress appeal form. Financial aid has their own. This is separate from the academic one that you would get from a guidance counselor. And the reason is Department of Education has different requirements than the academic advisors might have towards graduation. So there are two different sets of rules. We pretty much try to align with each other, but the Department of Ed may look at things, for instance, your GPA is a little bit different in financial aid than it is for your academics. And the reason is if you get an F in a class, for instance, and you retake that class, on your transcripts, that F goes away and is replaced with a past grade. For financial aid, they average the two grades together. So your GPA may still come out lower than what it is on your transcripts. And that's because every class you take counts for financial aid. So some of the ways that we calculate are definitely different than the ways that they calculate it for your transcripts and graduation. So anytime you have a question or a concern or you don't think that status is correct, or you've done better and you want us to look at it again, you do have a right to complete that satisfactory academic progress appeal form. That is pretty much the, you know, I, I see I'm looking at our time. I know Lucette still needs to talk, so I'm not gonna take a lot of time on other detailed information, but I wanted to kind of touch base on some of the things that we get the most phone calls and uh, most confusion about. So anytime you have questions with financial aid, please contact us. You can contact us in chat. You can come in live. You can email us and you can call us. So we look forward to helping you in any way we can and hope you have a great term. Thank you. Great, Pearl, a couple of questions real quick. Sure. Uh, when would be the best time for a student who's contemplating uh, start either graduating high school this year this spring, going to start CTC and get some credits out of the way. When would be the best time for them to do that FAFSA? When is the deadline? They can start that as soon as last October already, believe it or not. So, okay, so for the 23, now, 24 aid year, you can already do that FAFSA now. Okay, now's the time. The other question Thanks. is, I know that you recommend, uh, there's a difference between financial aid and student loans. So you would recommend students uh, apply for financial aid as opposed to a student loan because student loans, you have to pay those back. Is that correct? Right, and the application is, there is only one application for that, and the FAFSA is actually what qualifies you for both. So when you complete a FAFSA application, we in financial aid will accept your Pell Grant, which is the free financial aid for you. You don't have to go into student self-serve and accept it because it's free grant aid. We go ahead and accept it for you. If you want a student loan, I do try to talk you out of those, but if you do want a student loan, we certainly have those offered to you in a pending status, and you can go in and accept those, but then you also have two other requirements you have to meet in order to receive a loan, and that is an entrance counseling and a master promissory note. When you're in student self-serve and you accept those loans, you are automatically triggered to go to the links right there in student self-serve and complete both of those processes. Okay, and uh, the reason being again that we uh, discourage the student loan is because you have to pay those back. So at the end you of your have academic to pay them back career, and you're going to pay a lot more at a four year university than you are at CTC. So you're probably going to need loans when you move on to a four year university. 
unless you have a whole lot of scholarships. Right. And so we don't want you to start out with a whole amount of debt that you don't really need to incur. But if the student loan is your only option and your last resort, then that's that's OK, too. We're just looking out for your wallet right now. That's so right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Pearl. Uh, uh, and if you are a, a veteran of uh, the military or a, a current military member or someone using military benefits, Lucette has got some uh, Updates for us. I know that there's going to be a change uh, coming down the road here for veterans. Is that correct? Absolutely, but I think Jeff has a question. I, I have a I have a comment, uh, and I perhaps I should have mentioned it. Uh, <clears throat> st high school seniors need to fill out the FAFSA as a high school graduation requirement. Uh, either they they either need to fill out the FAFSA or they have to fill out a waiver saying they're not going to fill out the FAFSA in order to graduate. Graduate, and that was a. Uh, uh, new requirement as of last year. OK, that's so, great. Well, that that kind of puts them at ease as far as when they have to do that. They've got to do yeah, it now. Yeah. So good. <laughs> Thank you, Chad. <laughs> yeah. All right, Lisa. And I know that Pearl's team has been working with a lot of the local high schools, too, to help uh, make that transition a lot easier. So with the veteran services, if you are a veteran or your parents are a veteran or you're the spouse of a veteran, you may be entitled to education benefits. But first, you have to go to va.gov and go through the VA's registration process. Once you have that established, then you come to our web pages at ctcd.edu off of the main web page, um, and you can fill out what we affectionately call a VEC, which is short for Veteran Enrollment Certificate. Um, we do have staff here in Building 215 that you're welcome to come, and we can walk you through the process. Uh, we're about to go through a major transition, like uh, Bruce was just saying. The VA is going to shut their system down that has been active for decades on February 24th. It will no longer cease to exist. And at that point, there's going to be uh, several weeks where we are not allowed to process veteran benefits, and the new system will come up March 6th. So if you uh, know someone who's wanting to take some classes, after spring break, we need to get you registered and get your benefits taken care of ahead of time so that there's no delay in your benefits. Um, Bruce, is there a way for you to kind of show the web pages? Sure, sure. Uh, right quick. Yeah, I there. think I've got uh, the veterans benefits uh, already pulled up, so we'll start there. I can just click share. There we go. And so the reason I'm asking him to do that, A, is that reminder for the change is in the pink box up there. But then you can also see that there's sometimes quite a bit of documentation required. And once you get into eTrieve and eForms, there is a place at the bottom of the form for you to attach all of your documents with the little paperclip icon. Uh, fortunately, when we get to the new system, you may not have as many documents to upload. So we're looking forward to that new system. So you're going to be looking for things like a DD-214 and a certificate of eligibility from the VA. That will explain which benefit you have and how much of the benefit that you have. Not everybody gets to have their classes paid for right out, um, right out of the gate. So it depends on if you are a chapter 33 or a 31, then we can take care of your class tuition and your vouchers until you are certified fully with the VA. Others have to pay out of pocket. So please uh, make sure that you, if you have questions about filling this out and how it works, please come in and speak with the certifying official. We are happy to meet with you. Um, and we have the regular business hours. A lot of folks get tied up on Fridays because we're only open till um, 1130. Uh, and I encourage everybody to to get in early, especially with these changes coming up. Great. Yeah, that's good information because, uh, you know, a lot of students who are in the military and receiving that benefit may miss out on the opportunity here once this uh, VA once uh, ceases to exist and they have to go to the new enrollment manager. So right. certainly appreciate that. So. All right. Any any last words of wisdom from you, Lucetta, for the military veterans or military veterans? Um, no, we're just, you know, we <laughs> it's been an interesting term with all of the changes here. So we we do have a new coordinator, Vicki Putzer's on board, and we have a, a couple of new certifying officials that are in training. We have lots of new work studies. So 
Um, we are gaining traction here and we look forward to helping anybody as they come in or give us a call. We're happy to do what we can to make sure that your benefits um, are issued timely. Right, and for those who are veterans, we have a Vet Success Center on campus as well that can provide some information on other aspects of of, of, of your veteran benefits. So. Right, they can walk you through that side. They can actually um, help you get that certificate of eligibility. Um, they're very good at that. We also have the Texas Veterans Commission that's on campus too that, uh, that helps uh, some of our staff and students. That's great. So we've got something for everybody. Uh, Julie Starkey, our Dean of Student Services, she can address briefly. Uh, we offer free academic tutoring. We offer uh, disability support services for those in need. So, uh, Julie, if you can kind of touch on that just a little bit. Yeah, uh, just as a the, kind of a final thought as you're trying to can decide whether or not to come to CTC, I, I, I hope you're you're being sold that we're a great option for you. But the here, I just want to go over a couple of the resources, and this is ways that we support you once you become a student. Um, and I just want to go over a couple of them that are really important because I know we're short on time. First thing is, if you receive any kind of accommodations in high school, make sure that uh, you know that we do have a disability support services office. Uh, what I would encourage you to do is work with your high school counselor um, to make sure you get your medical documentation, not just your documentation. Um, um, you know, that you used in high school, but we need your actual copies of your medical documentation about what it is you need and go ahead and register with DSS, our disability support services so that we can figure out what accommodations you need here. Please understand accommodations at the high school level versus what we do at the college level are very different. We do not change uh, the nature of any course. So, for instance, let's say your IEP said that you only took multiple choice tests. Um, that is not an accommodation that you receive at the college level. We do not tell a faculty member how they administer tests or how they administer their class. You have to fulfill all the requirements. Everything that we do in DSS here is uh, more, they're usually testing accommodations. So you may get extended test time. You may get uh, a reader. Um, you may get um, special services like that, special seating in your classroom. Um, it's those kinds of things. But in order to get anything, you do have to submit your documentation to our counselors. They evaluate that and then they coordinate all of that with your faculty. Um, and our accommodations are not retroactive, so you have to receive the accommodations and then the faculty will work with you. We do not go back and make any changes or anything because we had not received it. So I really encourage you, if you are receiving those kinds of services in high school, talk right now to your counselors. Try to go ahead and get that documentation and go ahead and start having a meeting with our DSS staff uh, so that you are set and ready to go day one, because I think sometimes students delay doing it, thinking everything's going to be okay. I don't need that. Well, you can always say, I don't want those services, but you can't go back and get them. So just take care of it now. Um, and I also, that's a, a, a big thing that I'm going to tell you regard of all of our services that we have in place to help you tutoring, use it on day 1, first day of classes. We have it here in the academic studio where we do tutoring across the campus, but we'll also help you. I know, you know, we'll, we'll help you if you're not understanding your blackboard, if you're not understanding how to take a test, how to do note taking, how to organize, um, all of those kinds of things. We'll do group study. Ellen's area does all of math as well. So she's got like, if you're in a developmental class or advanced math, th there's tutoring available through that area for that as well. We have specialty tutoring for writing. Uh, the library has a, a, re a paper review. All of us coordinate on all of that. There are amazing tutoring resources. They can be in person and they can be virtual. So there is no reason for a student not to get the help and support that they need. Um, and so we are a great option when it comes to that. But we also have a lot of other things that help students, whether it be transportation, like if you're a CTE, you know, a career technical education students, we have um, child care assistance. We have book lending support. We have transportation assistance. So we have a ton of things like that out there. Maricelli's area, I'm sure she might mention all the clubs and orgs and great things that she offers in her areas that help students get connected to get connected. 
We have career services where we're going to help you develop resumes and uh, job interviewing skills and all of that we're going to provide for you. Um, but your first step that I want you all to pay attention to, if you're coming to CTC, we're going to want you at our new student orientation. We will be sending information out. It's a lot of this information, but it's way more detailed that we go into because we're getting ready. We're getting you ready for that first day of class and we want you to be successful. So we're going to be very specific about all of that. If you have any questions about the resources and how we support and help you, put them in the chat. I'll answer those, uh, but I think I'm going to stop there unless anybody has a question. And the main thing is the tutoring is free. That's the thing, and they cover a wide variety of subjects, everything from nursing to psychology to English to history to government to writing, everything that, that Julie Starkey mentioned. So uh, we've got you covered there for free tutoring. So uh, the, as a matter of fact, there and next month uh, is just one example is they will go from building to building to building to offer free tutoring as opposed to you going to the academic studio to, to seek tutoring. So if uh, if you're in a building and, you, and you're short on time, they'll be there for you that one particular time. So, you know, we offer different options for you to get that tutoring that you need. So, yeah. So, and as Julie Starkey mentioned, Maricelli Santiago Cruz has uh, the lowdown and everything you need to know about the campus clubs and organizations and student life and some other uh, areas that students need to be aware of as far as <laughs> academic dishonesty or, or those kind of things. So, uh, Maricelli, I'm going to leave that to you. <laughs> yeah, no, we're going to talk only about fun stuff today. So yeah, fun okay. things we are <laughs> that we want you to be able to actually connect with other people. That is, it's not just, education is not just about I did the work in the classroom or in online and that's it. We want you to feel like you are part of a community. We want, I, I feel like my department is the one that puts the community in the community college aspect of it. We want you to feel like you are part of a group and our team and that we are here for you. So. The way that we try to do that is by offering you, like they said, clubs and organizations uh, that may have some interest. Uh, right now, we have a very big and uh, a gaming uh, club that is really starting to get traction. They were going to start doing some tournaments and they really, really eventually want to grow. I just had a meeting with them today and they're very excited about that. Um, we have. Um, uh, also, the Otaku Unlimited, which is the anime club. We have organizations such as um, Net Impact, and they are actually work to figure out how to do things within the community and uh, using a business mindset to actually help their community. Um, Culinary Arts Club, they are constantly trying to learn how to apply what they learn in the classroom, also apply it into everyday lives and, and make sure that they're more successful in what they do. We have a plethora of them. So um, all you have to really do is come and be part of either a club organization. If you don't know uh, how to make a friend or who to talk to or anything like that, you can come down to the student lounge uh, in, in, um, in the Roy J. Smith building in our central campus. If you're here, that's where we have our student lounge. You're welcome to come on down here. Will you can meet some of the other students that are available uh, and make those connections and we can talk to you about some other options. Some of the other things that we're doing right now, we have a discord uh, that we have opened up if you're regardless of where you are in the world, uh, you're welcome to kind of mingle in our discord uh, server and talk about some of the situations that you're having with other students and maybe get some answers and we'll also look at it and see if we can help you. I actually have a question for Dr. Reese that I'm gonna need some help for uh, that came up in our Discord channel uh, regarding Blackboard. But uh, that's what we do. You know, We kind of figure out if a student has a situation, if they have a question, then we're gonna try to figure out how to help you answer so that you don't feel alone regardless of where you're at. If you're here in Texas, then yes, come on down. We wanna meet with you. And if you can't be here for whatever reason, you're somewhere else and you need a little bit of support, we have a lot of virtual options and we want you to feel like we're available to you. So please take those options. That's one of the ways that we're doing it. We have a lot, uh, we have activities planned throughout the year, uh, with different ways to do things um, so that you feel again, like you are part of a team. There are virtual activities, there are in-person activities. Come check us out, we're here for you. And like Dean Starkey said, one of my, most important things that we do is new student orientation. And I went ahead and put in the chat. Um, if you go to ctcd.edu forward slash NSO, that gives you all the options for new student orientation. We have one coming up in March and we would really love it 
uh, once you're a student or if even if you're still considering being a student, come on down, watch it, come, come spend some time with us. We might be able to help answer some of your questions and you'll get to meet some faculty, some staff um, and other students and we can help answer a lot of questions. We get a lot of questions through that. So please, please, please come on down. We're here for you. No matter what's going on, we will do everything that we can to help you out. All you have to do is reach out to us and we'll do it. That's great. And we do offer a lot and you can keep up with those activities and all the events virtual or in person through our social media platforms. We put those out there all the time. So no matter where you are in the world, you can always see what's going on with CTC and feel a part of it. Uh, the library has a ton of virtual events that they they host and, and want everybody to be a part of it, whether it's a black history month, the military history month, or whether it's just a some general information that it's kind of a fun fact kind of uh, presentation. So they've got a lot to offer you. So uh, again, always check us out on our social media and our website. And so uh, we'll keep you posted on what's going on around campus. So uh, we're about done here. We're about to run out of time. So I thank you all. And I'm just going to go around real quick and start with Dr. Reese and and get that last tidbit of information or, or advice that you would give to a prospective student or someone who's contemplating CTC. You're muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. Typically, no it's something that I already say and I just reiterate, but um, please, please, please communicate. If you have questions, ask. We are here to support you and help you and guide you. Um, even as faculty members, please make sure to ask us if you have questions along the way. We cannot help if we don't know that there is some type of confusion. Ellen? I have two things. One is the TSI uh, web page that I put in the chat. We do have free tutoring for the TSI as well, and it is free for pers prospective students. Also, you do not have to be a student. Mm -hmm. Academic Studio does reading and writing, and my lab does the math. And second, take your math first. Get it done with. And then you can go do all the fun things, but then you're not waiting at graduation to pass your math. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. <laughs> all right, Jeff, how about you? Any last uh, tidbits? <laughs> well, I think I generally speak to a lot of high school students about their next steps going into you know what they want to do after high school. However, if you're a non-traditional student, you may be 30, you may be 40, thinking about that next step, you know, and you want a different career path or so. Don't. Don't be scared. I know it's a it's a change. You're going to be the same age in two years or one year, whether you go or not. So take that into consideration. Yeah, good point. Good point. How about you, Pearl? I would say start early. Don't wait. Everybody wants to wait till right before classes start to figure out how to pay for it. And a lot of times that makes it way too late. And I have to be the bad guy and say, I'm sorry, you should have done this about a year ago. So please, please, please don't wait. Good point. And Julie? Um, I would say Eagle Soar, S O A R. And so if you are an entering or if you're a first time student at CTC, transfer whatever, we have a great program. It's called Soar. It is for you because we want to get you acclimated to your first semester and into your second semester and ultimately into graduation. We use peer mentors, we use grant aid, we use special services and programs. So we have a club and a way we're going to embrace you and make you be successful. So I want to see you in SOAR. Right. Thank you. That's a great point. And Maristelli, one last time. <laughs> Here's the thing. We right now we have scholarships, and I, I don't think we talked about this, uh, but I'm just gonna kind of bring it up. Scholarships are open for the fall semester. This kind of goes back to what Pearl had mentioned that sometimes you have to do it ahead of time. So it's open now until I think the 28th, correct? February, February 28th. Yes. Until February 28th. 59 p.m. Yeah. It shuts down. And your right. application for admission has to be in. Yes. So Definitely have your application in. Remember, that's not a commitment. That's just getting you in the door if you want it. And two, you also then fill out your scholarships because they're going to be the scholarships that you apply for now are going to be for the fall 2023 semester. So regardless, if you're starting now, if you're starting in the summer or if you're starting in the fall, do the scholarship, fill out the scholarship and the application now if you haven't done so along with your FAFSA, do it all at once, get it out of the way, because that's what you're going to need then later on to get, uh, you know, it's free money, people. Yeah, uh, just, and sometimes it's they don't even, people don't even apply and they're trying to get that money away. I don't know, like, it, 
I I've done stuff. To, it's like, hey, can I can I get some of that money? Like I've gone up there and asked, like, what do I need to get some of that money? And they tell me, no, you work for CTC. That doesn't work for you unless you're, yeah. They tell me no, but that's okay. <laughs> try, people, yes. try. It's free money. All you have to do is get the money, go to school, be successful. It's there for you. So that's my tidbit. The application for the scholarship is one page, and you only have to complete it once. Yeah, one application for all scholarships for which you are eligible to receive. So again, as Maricelli said, free money and get that out of the way. So you have something to look forward to in the fall semester when you start here. So, or continue on, you will have some money waiting on you. So again, that is our virtual information session. We certainly appreciate your time. We will post this later on our YouTube page. So if there's any information you need to review or anything that you might've missed, you wanna catch up on, uh, it'll be out there on YouTube a little bit later, uh, probably tomorrow. Our videographer is out today and she will jump on that first thing in the morning. So we'll have that probably mid morning uh, tomorrow on our CTC YouTube page. So again, Thanks to the, all the panel for being here. Thanks to all of the attendees. We certainly appreciate you. And we certainly hope to see you as Eagles in the very near future. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye.